Well, Chase43 asked me quite some time ago about the story on my snowmobiles, and I've been, I just keep forgetting to get it up and keep forgetting, and uh, I found myself in the shop because it's nasty out outside there, and uh, seems like a good time to do a story video. <clears throat> so here's the story. What we're looking at here is a John Deere 500. It is a 75, runs a KEC 440 um, Kawasaki motor. And the motor is actually built by uh, CCW, which is a, uh, a motor building firm or was, I don't know if they still are in business, but uh, CCW out of Canada. I believe what uh, CCW stands for, and, and as usual, you know, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe what CCW stands for is uh, Curtis Canadian Works. But I, I think it's at least close to that. But anyways, so the story on this snowmobile goes that this was a present to my dad on his 18th birthday. It was a, either a Christmas present or a birthday present. My dad's birthday is on December 12th and Christmas is on December 25th, so who knows. Anyways, got this for Christmas in 75. And he's just kind of held on to it the whole time. You know, it's the snowmobile that all of me and my other five brothers and sisters have learned to ride on. It's been a great sled. You know, they're not, they're not overly powerful and uh, they're not super fast, but, but they're a great sled. They're uber reliable. You know, I, I can't tell how many stories dad's told me about when he used to go on poker runs with my mom. And, you know, he said he never won the races. He never won the poker runs, but he always finished. You know, but uh, anyways, it's just a great sled and that 440 motor. You know, it's not not a complete dog or anything. So, this snowmobile sat in the shed um, or got parked in the shed about eight years ago. Here in Montana, we've had this funny weather pattern going on, and we haven't had enough snow in the last eight years to even bother pulling a snowmobile out of the sled. Shit, last year I was riding my bike in March, my motorcycle, my street bike. You know, it was 70, 75 degrees out. So this year we actually got some snow. We got dumped on hard, and it started in October and never ended until, well, shit. It snowed the other day. <laughs> yeah, shit, it did snow the other day. And this is actually fairly unseasonable, even, even for a normal, you know, season around here. I mean, usually it should be around 70 degrees now. But it is what it is. Anyways, we got enough snow to where I could ride. Well, I had two snowmobiles in the shed. This one and the one I'll show you next. Now, this one I knew ran because it ran when we parked it in the shed. And, uh, but I just hadn't messed with it. I'd go out there once a year, once every two years, and pull it over, make sure it wasn't seized up. So I decided to pull this one out of the shed and the Polaris that you'll see next. So I pulled this one out of the shed discovered the carburetor was gone and that the uh, track was off. Well, the first thing I did was uh, acquired a carburetor. I shouldn't say acquired. I had a Makuni sitting around in the shop, just an old Makuni off some dirt bike or four-wheeler, who knows. But uh, anyways, so I, I talked to uh, one, of my, one of my ATV guru guys that I talk to on a regular basis, Jerry Zawani um, out of uh, Sydney, Montana. He told me, oh, yeah, by all means, you know, if it's the BM series Makuni, yeah, jet it to such and such, and, and uh, basically kind of gave me an idea what to do with it. So I, uh, I put the carburetor on, adapted the boot, put a carburetor on, got a, got a standalone air filter for it, and took the uh, air box out, jetted it to, I believe, I, I think what I got in it now is a 270 main jet, um, with P7 needles and once again I'm talking in pops and clicks to you guys that don't understand this so I'll just make it simple. I jetted it and uh, read the plugs and got it running good. Well mid-season the points went out of it because this is still points driven and um, <clears throat> so that's actually why it's sitting up here at the shop instead of down at my uh, big mysterious shed. If you haven't seen that video check it out. Um, so I just got to put points in it and it'll be fine. You know, it's a 75, it runs great. There's no reason to, to ride anything different. All it really needs is the seat covered and, uh, and besides the points and it'll be great. 
So anyways, the next sled I've got to show you... It's ugly. <laughs> yeah, it is ugly. Is this sled. And this sled, let me tell you, is ugly. I don't know what the hell people were smoking in 76, but this sled has got to be one of the ugliest sleds I have ever seen in my entire life. So anyways, what it is, is a 76 Polaris TX340. And uh, the story on this one is a little bit different from, uh, from my dad's 75 John Deere 440, or John Deere 500 with the 440 motor. The story behind this one goes that we had some hired hands that actually lived in the house that I live in now that uh, worked for us for a while. And uh, they brought out a snowmobile, you know, thought they were going to ride it. They uh, kind of took off without uh, taking much, and one of the things they left behind is a sled. Well, one of these hired hands had talked to me about it, and he, he said, I don't give a shit. That's a pile of shit. I can't get it to run for nothing. That's what a pile of shit. And that's about all that I, all that I knew about it. So <laughs> I uh, took that for what it was and decided that I'd keep it. You know, like most things around here, I'd just save it. You know, maybe I can get it running later. Never really did anything with it. I think I shot some gas in the in the carb and, and uh, heard it run, but that was all I really knew. So same thing about up until this year um, we haven't had enough snow in eight years to go snowmobiling so this one along with the John Deere sat in the sled or sat in the shed so I decided that this would be another one that I'd pull up to the shop and uh, see what I could do with so I got it up to the shop just uh, had two carburetors on it both of them were mismatched and um, yeah so I just kind of started working on it I, uh, it turned out it was seized after sitting for so many years because I just I didn't pull this one over like I did with the John Deere. I just left it sit. So I uh, took the carburetors and boots off and uh, shot some shot some uh, WD-40 down the down the cylinders and worked on it for a couple days and uh, eventually got it to free up. <laughs> Spun over nice, had good compression and everything even. So. I uh, got to work on it. Had a good track, skis were good, you know. Obviously the rest of it's in terrible, terrible shape. It was missing the headlight, so I kind of cobbled in with a bunch of duct tape this this uh, two beam or single beam headlight that you see there. It uh, turned out that both of the carburetors were absolutely shot, aside from the fact that they were mismatched. So it took me about two weeks of trial and error. I uh, found a set of carbs, another set that I had laying around. And uh, jetted them up. I'm running a 160 in the fan side and a 150 in the uh, running a 160 in the fan side and a 150 in the uh, in the drive side. And uh, 30 number 30 uh, pilot jets and uh, P5. <laughs> yes, I know Roman. Pop click, pop click. And uh, P5 needles and seats. So I played with it enough to find that combination with these carburetors and eventually got it to run great. Um, had to jet it a little bit over stock because of the uh, air cleaners that I had to put on it because I didn't have a stock air box and I wasn't willing to pay $200 to buy one for a sled that's, well, quite honestly, looks like a piece of garbage. But anyways, so I got it to run and actually it ran good. This This sled is really pretty quick you know it's it's a good sled and it's decent on fuel it's not great but but uh, starts just about every time every once in a while you'll have a little bit of troubles with it it uh, tends to foul plugs just a touch but uh, didn't have any other jets laying around so I just left them as they were uh, really other than that though that's that's the story so <laughs> now I've got two good sleds to ride and I'm hoping that it snows this this uh, this winter again. <laughs> Otherwise, everything I did last year will all be for nothing. So, Chase 43, I hope that uh, answers your questions. And uh, yeah, keep tuned because uh, this winter will definitely, if we got enough snow, well, hell, maybe even if we don't have enough snow, we'll probably be firing them up and seeing what we can do.